In an earlier video, I defined and reviewed linear Diophantine equations, and then we developed a much easier way to solve those than it is typically taught or developed in any textbook. So in this video, we're going to skip the review and we're going to get right into solving three linear Diophantine equations. And we're going to use that new method that we developed in an earlier video uh, that I referred to as a table of quotients. So in this first problem, notice we have 12,378x plus 3,054y equals 6. 6 happens to be the greatest common divisor because we know that in any linear combination here, it will always have a solution as long as we set it equal to the greatest common divisor. In fact, every other integer solution to this linear combination will be an integer multiple of 6. So remember, uh, again, if you need a review, you can, can, you can take a look at our earlier video. But we go through the Euclidean algorithm. We take the largest value, 12,378, divided by the smaller one. It goes in four times with the remainder of 162. Then we bring down 3,054, and we divide it by the previous remainder. It goes in 18 times with the remainder of 138. Then we bring down 162. We divide it by the previous remainder. It goes in once with the remainder of 24. Bringing 138 down and dividing it by 24, it goes in five with the remainder of 18. Then 24 divided by 18 goes in once with the remainder of six. And then finally 18 divided by six goes in three times evenly or with the remainder of zero. Now, as soon as we get zero, remember that our previous non-zero remainder is the greatest common divisor of these two values. We go through the Euclidean algorithm and not only to find the greatest common divisor, but also we need these quotients here. Because if we're going to solve a linear Diophantine equation such as this, in the most efficient way, we don't want to do all that back substitution. So notice our quotients here. 4, 18, 1, 5, 1, 3. We put those across this table here. Here's our two values. Again, this box is always the same. And then remember, we fill out the table. Remember to come up with every value. For example, this, 18 right here. We take 18 times 1 and then add the previous value in that row. Or to get 19, it'd be 1 times 18 plus the previous value in that row. Or to get 113, it'd be 5 times 19 plus 18, the previous value in that row. And likewise, to fill out this second row. For example, to get 77 here, I take 1 times 73 plus the previous value in that row. And that's 77. So that's how we fill out the table. And when we fill out that table, the second to last column, if you remember from our earlier video, is the solutions that we need. So 132 and 535. Now, one of them may be negative. Again, there is a formula to determine which one is negative and which one is positive. However, it's really about as easy just to do trial and error. Notice <clears throat> you're going to pair 535 with 3054. Okay. This will be the value of y and this will be the value of x. Again, one of them may be negative, one may be positive, and that'll make it equal to the greatest common divisor. So now notice we have our solution to that equation. And notice using this table is a much easier way than doing all that back substitution that uh, is typically introduced in a textbook or uh, taught. So let's go on to a second one because sometimes we start out with an equation that is not equal to the greatest common divisor. For example, here it's equal to 906. And that's fine, but we still need the greatest common divisor. Now even if you can determine by looking at your coefficients, because they're rather small here, what the greatest common divisor may be, we still want to go through the Euclidean algorithm because we need these quotients. So 54 divided by 21, well 21 goes in twice with the remainder of 12. 
Then we bring 21 down and divide it by the, our previous remainder. It goes in once with a remainder of 9. 12 divided by 9, well 9 goes in once with a remainder of 3. And then 9 divided by 3, 3 goes in once with a remainder of 0. So again, our last non-zero remainder, which is 3 here, is our greatest common divisor of 54 and 21. These quotients we put across the top of our table, 2, 1, 1, 1. Here's 54 and 21. Put the largest value first and then the second. This table is always the same. Again, we fill out our table. For example, to come up with this 2, it'd be 1 times 1 plus the previous value in that row, or to 5, 1 times 3 plus the previous value in that row, and get 5. So you can fill out the table rather quickly. Again, the second to last column are the values that we need to allow this linear combination to equal the greatest common divisor. So for example, using 2 and 5, I can substitute those values in for x and y. That allows this linear combination to equal the greatest common divisor. Now, our original equation was not set equal to the greatest common divisor. But we know that every other linear combination is an integer multiple of 3. So in other words, 906 is just an integer multiple of 3, or exactly 300 and two times larger. So I can just take this equation and multiply both sides by 302. Notice two times 302 is 604. I take a negative five times 302, and I take three times 302. And I have a solution to my original equation. We also know that anytime I find a solution, if, the, if a solution exists, there's always an infinite number of solutions. We can find the other solutions. Remember, again, we developed all this in the earlier video, but other values of x would be my initial value of x, which is 604, plus b over d. Okay. Now, b is the coefficient with y, not x. And <clears throat> times integer multiples of that. And y, other values of y, will be my initial value of y, which is a negative 15, 10, minus a, that's the coefficient with x, divided by d. Again, d is our greatest common divisor. So in other words here, 604, my initial value of x, plus 21, notice that was the coefficient with y, divided by my greatest common divisor, times k. Or in other words, I can find other values of x by taking 604 plus 7k. And k is any integer. Other values of y can be found by my initial value of y minus 54. 54, remember, was the coefficient with x divided by the greatest common divisor and integer multiples of that. Or in other words, a negative 1510 minus 18k. And this is how I can find other solutions. So I can let k be any integer, and I come up with another pair of solutions that would work, that would allow it to equal 906. <clears throat> now, notice, for example, then, looking at this, if I would happen to let k equal a negative 5, well, that would just be 604 minus 35, or 569. And I could let k equal negative 5 here then, get a positive 90, to add to a negative 1510 and get a negative 1420. This would be another solution set. There are times that we require positive solutions only. We worked one like this in the earlier video also. So if we require positive solutions only, then of course these two values, 604 plus 7k and a negative 1510 minus 18k, must both be greater than or equal to zero. 
And solving these two linear inequalities, okay, it would have to satisfy both of these at the same time if I require both x and y to both be positive. I find that k would have to be less than or equal to a negative 84 and at the same time greater than or equal to a negative 86. I think I, so <laughs> k is greater than or equal to a negative 86 and at the same time less than or equal to a negative 84. Okay. And then of course these are the values I could plug in for k here to find other solutions for x and y where x and y are both positive. Okay, so using this table here, a much, much easier way to solve linear Diophantine equations. Again, we might refer to this as just a table of quotients. Now, so we know how to solve these. I just thought I'd go over one other example. This is a very old kind of famous problem from, from the year 1526. It reads, find the number of men, women, and children in a company of 20 persons if together they pay 20 coins, each man paying three, each woman paying two, and each child paying one half. So notice here we have three variables. We know that there are 20 people. So if I take x plus y plus z, that must equal 20. And then dealing with the money here, or the coins, if x represents how many men, three times x would represent the coins that the men are paying. Uh, two times y would represent the coins that the women are paying, and then one half times z if z represents the children. And of course that must also equal 20 coins. So notice we have two equations, but three variables. So we first could eliminate our fractions in this equation. Notice here I'm going to multiply, therefore, by 2 and I get 6x plus 4y plus z equals 40. And then of course I still have my original equation over here of my other equation. And I'm going to subtract this second equation from this one to eliminate one of my variables. So I get 5x plus 3y equals 20. So notice I did have three variables, but now I just have a linear Diophantine equations because I'm looking for integer solutions only in this case. Those would be the only values that would make sense for this problem. This one's pretty easy. We might just trial and error. Notice if x is 1, y could be 5, and that would make this equation true. And then, of course, we could just solve for z. So this was just an example that sometimes we end up with two equations and three variables, and we can reduce it to just a linear combination of two variables and then solve it like the previous two we just looked at. So I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you next time.